Okay, um, I'm going to go through the first two circle theorems very quickly in this video. Um, I'm going to show you how, where they come from, how they work, and it should allow you to do the first four questions on this first slide. And the, you should then also be able to work on to some of the other ones on the other side. Um, I will link them to the other bits and pieces as we go through. There, there's actually three theorems I'll cover in this, actually, thinking about it. So let's start off with the, the basic diagram. What we've got is we've got a chord, MN, and this isn't actually part of the angles going on, but it's part of the construction of the proof. And it, across there, we connect to a point in the seg opposite segment. We also connect to the center. And we're going to build up the relationship between the angle MAN, the alpha and the beta, and the angle MON. So we mark the angle alpha and beta, the right expressions for the triangles. Now, the th trick is to realize that these two triangles uh, are both actually isosceles triangles. Uh, as they are isosceles triangles, the base angles are the same. Because the base angles are the same, we can now actually work out the angles at the center. So this is 180 minus 2 alpha. This one's 180 minus 2 beta. Uh, when we're doing algebra with angles, um, a lot of the time mathematicians use Greek letters, alpha, beta, gamma, theta, omega. Omega is normally for a rate of change of angle. So we've now got a position here. This remaining angle is going to be 360 minus these two parts. We do 360 minus those two parts. We find that we have what's left is 2 alpha, 2 beta. So this gives us a conclusion that the angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle out at the, um, on the, uh, the segment opposite. So you've got a chord. The angle on the effect segment is opposite. That will give me twice the angle. Now, that's the first theorem. The second theorem I'd like you to learn is if I make this into a straight line, so we've got the diameter, this angle is now 180 degrees. If this is 180 degrees, the angle on one segment must be 90 degrees. So the angle subtended in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Third one, it doesn't matter where this point A is in this opposite segment, the relationship still holds. This angle at the center hasn't changed. So the angle out here is still the same sum. A alpha and beta change size, but the angle itself, M A N, stays the same. So it doesn't matter where this is, as long as it's in that top part, even over here, this angle here is still subtended by the, uh, the chord M N. So this angle is still half the angle at the center of the circle subtended by the same chord. It doesn't matter where it is in that top section. The last part, and this is now a fourth proof. The fourth proof is, if this angle we know is um, twice of that one, if I was to bring this all the way around to the other side, we actually have the angle on this side is the, uh, half the angle on that side. Well, that angle on that side is 360 minus my alpha and beta. So I've got alpha and beta up here. And what we've actually just shown is that the angle, opposite angles in opposite segments add up to 180 degrees. So that's four theorems that I'll just put together a quick note for. So, quick summary. The angle subtended by a chord across here. The angle on the circumference is half the angle at the centre, or the angle at the centre is double the angle on the circumference. Uh, angles in a semicircle form a right angle, so there's a diameter going through the middle. You should look for a dot in the middle to show it's going through the centre, but this creates a 90 degree angle. 
angles in the same segment on a circumference are equal. So we've got a chord at the bottom here. These two angles must be equal because the angle made at the center by that chord doesn't change. So these are both half of that angle. So these angles are equal. And so by um, doing a chord on the other side, these two angles are equal. Okay. And third one, angles in opposite segments make it 180 degrees. And that's because this angle is double that one. This angle is 360 minus that angle. So this angle must, and that angle must make a straight line. That's the first video. There's one more that I'll be showing as part of this lesson as well. But it's a, a different proof based upon isosceles triangle. But it's a based upon isosceles triangles all the way through.